Okay, so in this video, we will give a simple yet elegant example of part B of Riemann's rearrangement theorem. So all we need to begin with is a series that converge conditionally. So we'll take the following one. So summing from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n. If we write out the first few terms of the series, what we are doing is we're summing the reciprocals of the integers with an alternation in sign. So let's write out the first few terms of the series. So this series converges conditionally. You can prove that the series converges, of course, with the alternating series test. But if you put the terms in absolute value, then you're summing 1 over n from 1 to infinity. This is the harmonic series, or if you prefer, a p-series with p equals 1, therefore diverges. So this series does converge conditionally. And if you recall, we know the exact value this series converges to. It actually converges to exactly ln of 2. Now, although the idea of the rearrangement of the series is simple, it is a bit devious. So we'll look now at a half ln of 2. So if we multiply this series by a half, we multiply each term by 1 half, which will give the new series 1 half, negative 1 quarters, 1 quarter, plus 1 over 6, negative 1 over 8, plus 1 over 10, negative 1 over 12, plus 1 over 14, negative 1 over 16, plus 1 over 18, minus 1 over 20, plus 1 over 22, and so forth. The next step is also kind of devious, is what we'll do is we'll add the same terms, but we'll squeeze in, in between each one, a zero. No matter how often we add zeros, it's still zero, so the result of the series will not change. So this will come out to be the following. So a half ln 2 will be, so zero, then I'll add a half, I'll add zero again, then I'll add negative 1 quarter, I'll add 0 again, then I'll add 1 over 6, I'll add a 0, then I'll add negative 1 over 8, I'll add another 0, then I'll add positive 1 over 10, add another 0, then I'll add negative 1 over 12, and so forth. So as I said, before the result of this series is still a half ln 2, because all we've done is we've added in between each term of the previous series 0, and this will not change the end result. Now let's write underneath a half ln 2 the original series for ln 2. So ln 2, if we go back to the original series, is 1 minus a half plus a third minus a quarter, plus a fifth, minus 1 over 6, plus 1 over 7, minus 1 over 8, plus 1 over 9, minus 1 over 10, plus 1 over 11, minus 1 over 12, and so forth. And the idea now is to simply add these two series together, so we will be adding corresponding terms. The first terms together, the second terms together, the third terms together, and so forth. Well, one thing is clear. If we add 1 half ln 2 to ln 2, we get 3 half ln 2. And let's see what happens after we add the corresponding terms of both series. So 0 plus 1 is 1, plus 1 half minus 1 half is 0, so we will be omitting the 0, plus 
zero plus one third plus a third plus negative a quarter, negative a quarter, negative two quarters, which is negative one half, plus zero plus one over five, one over five, plus one over six minus one over six is zero. We will omit this. Plus zero plus one over seven, plus one over seven, plus negative one over eight, negative one over eight, negative two over eight, which is of course negative one quarter, plus zero plus one over nine, plus one over nine, plus one over ten minus one over ten is zero. We will be omitting zero again. Plus zero plus one over eleven, plus one over eleven, plus negative one over twelve, plus negative one over twelve is negative two over twelve, which is negative one over six. And hopefully you can see the pattern, right? We add the reciprocals of the first two odd numbers, one and three. Then we add the negative of the first even number. Then we add the reciprocals of the next two odd integers, five and seven. Then we add the negative of the reciprocal of the next even number, four. Then we add the reciprocals of the next two odd numbers, five, seven, nine, eleven, and then we add the negative of the reciprocal of the next even number. And you can guess that the next three terms will be plus, well, after nine and eleven, we get one over thirteen plus one over fifteen, and then we add the negative of the reciprocal of the next even number, which will be eight, and so forth. Now, why is this interesting? I claim that we have now reached our conclusion. Let's see. Look at the terms we're summing in this series, where we obtain three over two times ln of two, and look at the terms from this series, where we obtain ln of two. If you look at the two series closely, we are summing the exact same terms, but from here to here in a different order. If you look, one plus a third, so one plus a third, then we add negative a half, then we add a fifth plus one over seven, then we add negative a quarter, then we add one over nine plus one over eleven, then we add the next negative term, then we add one over thirteen plus one over fifteen, they'll be here, and then we add the next negative number, negative one over eight, and so forth. So it should be clear that in both cases, we are adding the exact same terms. And the only difference from this series and this series is that here we are summing the terms from this series in a different order, therefore this series is a rearrangement of this series. And so you see, if you sum the reciprocals of the positive integers with an alternation in sign directly as is, you obtain ln of two. But if you pair them up, if you rearrange the terms in this fashion, then the new series still converges, but we arrive at a different answer. This series no longer converges to ln of two, but to three half ln two, even though we are summing the exact same terms as in this series, but after performing a rearrangement. So hopefully, this at least gives you some sense that the result may be general for all series that converge conditionally and for all real numbers. And that's it.